think it all starts from here. What's your passion, who you are, and when you know that and when you make yourself happy, you can be a better entrepreneur, a better dad, better friend, better employee, and you can inspire other people with whatever you do. This is Entrepreneur's The Playbook, where I give you access each week to the world's greatest athletes and executives about their personal and professional playbook and what has made them champions on and off the field. This is The Playbook. This is Dave Meltzer, CEO of Sports One Marketing, and I am here with The Playbook from Entrepreneur, and I have a unique visitor on the show this week because it's one of my favorite places, Finland, and Woo. we have Yuka Hilden. I practiced the name six times, so I got it right. Welcome to the show. Thank you, thank you so much. I, I love the outfit. Tell me a little bit about the outfit. Yeah, this is just me. Uh, nice. I, I wanted to put on a Santa Claus outfit because Santa Claus is from Finland, but then uh, Coca-Cola stole him from us. Those <laughs> really? bastards. But, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, it's just me. This is uh, my jeans and You're I haven't like changed them in, in a week, the so they probably Dudley smell a little bit. You're the Finnish Dudley Do-Right. I, yeah. I like it. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, um, the idea of the playbook is to understand, you know, how you got to where you are, your playbook to success. And what I like most about you, Yuka, you're like me. You didn't take the straight road to success. Oh, no, definitely not. <laughs> it, I, I hit a couple of speed bumps on the road. Well, let's start there. Give, give me those speed bumps and t tell me that journey as we go along. You know what I love about th this take on life and success is tell all the mistakes because that's where you really learn, where you see so many people there just painting a blue sky and sunshine. And, you know, you think that all the, all the success just fell on their lap by luck. Yeah, or I hate that word, business. by the way. I do a whole thing about luck, because if you Screw ask somebody that. from start to finish how luck happened, it's not luck. It's not. T That's why I always pour my own sake, because I don't believe in bad luck. <laughs> nice. or I'm full, my life is filled with bad luck. But you know what's interesting about me <laughs> is I grew up in a small little town in Finland, west coast of Finland, 500 people. My dad can't read or write. My family is down about two bankruptcies. So I, I grew up really poor. Uh, Nobody shoved a golden spoon up my butt. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, uh, but then I, I always believed in my dream. And uh, I had uh, some sort of an ambition or mission to, to do something bigger and inspire more people than just 5.5 million reindeers in Finland. Yeah, I knew, And that I knew, eventually yeah. uh, led me to the road to travel the, the, the world and now being able to run the biggest independent production company in Finland and opening an office here in the US. And, and actually, we just got done producing the biggest non-scripted series for YouTube Red. So I work for Mr. Google now. <laughs> Very cool. Well, and so, and so do we. And it's called the Ultimate Expedition. And it's coming out. If I wasn't such a wimp, I would ask you to get on that show. But it looks a little bit above my pay grade and, and fear factor. But uh, <laughs> speaking of fear, you know, here, you and I grew up with nothing. And, you know, unfortunately, I also didn't grow up with a spoon up my ass. Uh, I don't know if I could say that. But I'm glad I did. Because I believe... You know, if I ask people what you're most grateful for and you look back, it's always the things you never would believe you'd be grateful for. You know, I, I, that's exactly true. And I love the fact that what, what motivates me to work harder every day is because I know what I can fall back to. Right. Because I knew where I came from and I don't want to go back to Finland. It's freezing cold over there. Here <laughs> you got sunshine and palm trees and I got a beautiful family, two kids running around. So I don't want to go and put on the jumper suits and layer layers after layers and throw them out in the, su in the snow. I just yeah, want to you know, kick either. them outside naked, run and jump in the pool. I, I think snow and ice is made for visiting. Yeah, yeah, great, that's what I like to, to visit, go. right? You know, I love going to Finland during the Christmas time. I like to stay at the snow castle. There's a hotel made out of snow and ice. That's great to stay for one night, sleep on that reindeer sort of skin. But then <laughs> when you're, I'm 37, yeah. I've done stunts all my life. So my, my, uh, I ache a little bit when I wake up and sleeping on a snowy bed, I ache even more. So <laughs> it's nice for visiting and then coming back. Yeah, no doubt. No, you know, it's, it's a long road to, to the success, especially in the entertainment business. And your family went bankrupt twice. In America, the average millionaire goes bankrupt twice. And I always say, you're not going to get what you want in, unless you're willing to risk everything you have. Yeah. And most millions or millionaires or successful people will tell you, that's the reason I'm here. And I'm still willing to risk everything I have because I know what that bottom is like and I know I can come right back up. Yeah. There's, there's no, with no risk, there's no reward. And uh, I, I remember times when we, when we started, I mean, gladly I had... Uh, three similar minded friends. So it was four dudes that started everything. And we, we just grew from, and our passion was in creating unique and original content, something fun, something so absurd, absurd that 
and ridiculous that that idea itself would make people laugh if it was and doing things just differently when you look at how people climb trees i want to climb that tree but first because that'll <laughs> make people laugh and that'll make me fall on my head right and that was the beginning but after we kind of learned the business slowly we 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 started expanding and now we employ 60 people in uh, in finland and 90 in the us That's uh, so so it's it's been a fun road but i remember the times where we employed seven good friends of ours and we always look at business like one big happy family we we i think it's a people business you work with people that you love and you wake up in the morning you're gonna have a blast at job you don't want to work with assholes so we had good people working <laughs> yeah we had good people working but we had zero dollars on the account yeah. We're like shit their families and they are counting on us to pay the bills and we got to pay everybody's salaries tomorrow we got no money but thank god we entered a poker tournament won 50,000 euros, <laughs> really? put that on the company account and paid everybody's salaries and just That's, shut up about yeah, it. Every great entrepreneur has a story where they found that last paycheck for everyone. It is, to me, uh, that's the biggest responsibility I have. It's, it's one thing to have your own family like we do with kids, but it's a whole nother because people don't realize the pressure on a CEO. Man. When when you it's not just I have four kids and, and a beautiful wife and I lucked out by getting I know I won't get another beautiful wife so I can't blow that mm -hmm. but beyond that I have you know 50 employees with their own families and the last thing that I want to do is to have them come home and say hey there's no paycheck because David didn't live up to his responsibility yeah he didn't do his best yeah what I believe in is it's enough every time you just do your best and you know then rest of it is up to things happening the way they're supposed to happen or you hope them to happen but um it is it is a tough place and i i've been a young entrepreneur because we started back in 97 when i was 17. yeah and now i'm 37 so 20 years later we've been having some ups and downs and and we, we've come to us i've been traveling back and forth for 15 years from finland the smallest place <laughs> you can you imagine no on the other side of the Norwegian planet. Norwegian airline now has those new Dreamliners. You're enjoying that? I'm enjoying that. And you know what? There's uh, Finland's <laughs> becoming, it's a huge entrepreneur country now because Nokia split up and all those engineers and graphic designers put up their own gaming companies. So right. we have companies like uh, Supercell that sold for $2 billion to some Japanese Chinese investors. We got Angry Birds and Rovio that you is obviously VC money huge. and you got meetingpackages.com with our friend Eunice and you got Marcos doing huge movies. Yeah. You guys are big for, I was just in Curacao. For entertainment, I think you are, Curacao is known for baseball. 180,000 people, the most baseball players in Major League Baseball. I think Finland is known for, you know, entertainment. Entertainment and craziness, most of all. Because this, this, <laughs> this is what Finland has. National sports and sports we have. We got the Air Guitar World Championships. We got the Swamp Soccer Championships. We got uh, World Championships. We got wife carrying competitions. We got sauna competitions. We got... Uh, uh, the distance cell phone throwing competition. All these are national competitions that we have. And yeah. I think one of the funniest ones is the wife carrying one because you actually pick, and the way the best technique is that you pick the wife up upside down and uh, and uh, kind of like a fireman's carry, but the wife grabs onto your legs from behind <laughs> and is kind of putting her <laughs> <laughs> face between her butt cheeks. Yeah, yeah. And that's the way to run. And it's got like obstacles and you run through this oh, little no. water pond. But it's mayhem. We got, uh, you know, co uh, people coming in and competing in it all over Europe. Uh, don't tell my wife that. She'll, <laughs> she'll never go back to Helsinki. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. So what you're talking about is something interesting because I find people, especially from Finland, because people are crazy there, or I call it illumination. Th this is my philosophy, and tell me what you think, because you are a YouTube guy. You understand this. I believe there's today, because of YouTube and all the great digital mediums that exist, that didn't exist when you were 17, but today, there's 7 billion or so people on Earth. 3.2 billion of them are on the internet. And what you need to do, like you do, Yuka, and I try to do, and I learned later on in my life, is to find my frequency. Yeah. Right? Like, people in Helsinki, excuse my language, I don't know if I can say it, but they don't give a shit. Right? They're just them. And this is my frequency. And when I met you originally, you know, right now in your, your uh, Dudley Do-Right Helsinki suit and, you know, the finish last attitude, which I love, I'm like, <laughs> this is my new best friend. Right? I hung out with Marcus, your good friend. I go, 
birds of a feather flock together. This guy knows his frequency and that humor that you started way long ago was a certain frequency. Yeah. And there's millions of people that love it. And that's why you have the top shows and the top movies and 90 employees here and you're, you're banging it. Talk to people about being yourself and holding your own frequency. And that's, that's the biggest thing. That's what, that's, a, cause that's a good lesson my mother taught me. You can just always be yourself cause that's enough. Then you can just, for the people that don't like uh, like you, you can just say, well, I was just myself. Or the people who like you, they like you for the r right reasons. So when I came here, everybody's always, and I started coming here in 2006 and I hung out with like all these posh people like Lindsay Lohan and Paris Hilton and <laughs> all their friends, all the, 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 the different <laughs> vibrations. All, yeah. the, all the people. The popular people. Yeah, the popular people. <laughs> they, uh, they would ask me, what do I do? Where am I from? And they would always try to put me in a certain sort of locker or slot. Yeah. And I was always, no, I'm from Dark Side of the Moon. I'm a rock and roll movie star. And I sell cat sand. And they'd be like thrown off because they're like, he's not trying to be like everybody else. Like he actually knows who he is and he's comfortable by being that person. Yeah. And I think it all starts from here. What's your passion, who you are, and when you know that and when you make yourself happy, you can be a better entrepreneur, a better dad, better friend better employee and you can inspire other people with whatever you do because it comes straight from the heart. Absolutely. You said something earlier too that really resonated with me. My next book, and you I want you to talk about it, is called Don't Do Business with Dicks. <laughs> and you said, <laughs> right, a code of yours was to have all this, these people that you're close with around you. Talk to the fact, you know, I have teenage girls and I tell them, show me How your friends. 18, 16, 13, stay away. 18, <laughs> 16, 13. And I say, show me your friends and I'll show you your future. Yeah. It, that's so much about what happens surround, you surround yourself, yourself with positive people, good energy that you get from, but you also get to give to. And I had the burden because I grew up, unfortunately, my childhood was, I had a lot of love, uh, I had a, uh, so I have a good heart. I had a lot of attention, so I knew that my opinion matters and I got uh, a great self-confidence, but I had no rules. I was 11, I was skateboarding, listening to NWA. If the pole is, I was 11. I didn't even know what that <laughs> means. I was in Finland in a suburb. But anyway, uh, so I have no rules. I have no respect to authority. But thank God I had good heart. So and I had good friends around me. So I developed my skill of respect, no authority to good. So I can negotiate. I can talk my way out of any situation. But if I would use it for bad, if I had bad people around me, I'd be in jail. Um, so I believe in cutting away the the strings around you for the people that just constantly bring you negativity and uh, abuse you and, no, when and you got remember. more successful and this happened twice in my life you know certain people uh you know going from ups to downs you find out who your true friends are yeah give me a, a circumstance where you know you were close to someone and it ended up you felt as if maybe they were only surrounding themselves to use you well <clears throat> first of all i've i've been blessed enough because I come from Finland and we're pretty freaking real. Yeah. Uh, and I, uh, we started, we started the business with four, uh, three of my best friends in, uh, you know, over 20 years ago when we were in elementary school, and we we started to know each other then, and then we started the business in high school, and we've been together ever since. And over the time, we've been to therapy, just like Metallica went. Right. right. You know, yeah. we we went there to figure out who we are, so that we can respect each other's strengths and know the weaknesses, so we don't push them on the wrong moment. Smart. And we respect and we continue to heal those relationships. And and we lead our company with love because, first of all, it's the best way. Then you care about the employees and the people, the the one big happy family. And when they feel that they're cared for and they have everything's good back home, they're gonna work harder for you and love is free. Yeah, I, I that's, agree. That's how we, we look at it. So I've, I've had people that, yeah, I've done some bad hirings or I've had some bad friends around me that I noticed that I'm always the one when I was young paying the bill and they would just tag along to get something out of me and then they would just disappear. Yeah. But we've all had that. Thank God at some point, you know, my wife told me that you are you not seeing what's happening that's why as expensive as a wife is that's where they save it all the way back yeah and for some reason my wife as well they are a barometer of good people and they point out speaking of which one of the hard things about being successful is friends start not being real uh, so they're afraid to tell you what you're doing wrong yeah and it was a big problem for me do you ever have that side happen where everyone's yes, man? Oh, you're so great, Eric. Oh, anything I can do and everything you say, or you know, do you guys challenge each other? And, we and challenge each other, and the funny thing is that sort of the, our board of leaders and and the 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 old four friends, we're so real that uh, 
I think I'd be an asshole, sorry for my language, if <laughs> I wouldn't have them around me. But because we know each other from the childhood, we know who we are. And if somebody starts to kind of float, we're going to bring them down. Yeah. Because we're going to be straightforward about it, that you're not right right now. Like, you don't go out there and say, don't you know who I am? Well, you guys are so open. I mean, you know, I love a group that'll go to therapy because one, one of the hardest things about hanging, I have a lot of childhood friends like you. And, you know, sometimes it's difficult because they carry perceptions of what you were like when you were seven. Yeah. Right. So you could do something today and they would say, oh, that's like Yurik. He's done it since he's been seven. And, and I'll give you an example. You know, you, you, you could have an employee that's abusive and you could talk to that employee and say, look, you can't speak that way to people. I really want you to work on it. And then you haven't seen him in a while. And in fact, he really worked on it, worked on it, worked on it. And three years later, you walk in and he it's just a really bad day and he was abusive. Well, you're going to immediately say you haven't done any. There's no improvement there. When in actuality, someone that had been there every day managing him, when you go back and say they say, oh, my God, this, this is just a rare circumstance. He's he's really made those changes. I find that's the hardest part about being around people that know you from childhood. They instantly go to, you know, that's the kid that stole the candy bar out of the grocery store. Yeah, I think uh, that is true. When you evolve and grow to grow up together, there's a certain change to it. But I, now that I think of it, I was in a place where uh, this year I started spearheading our brand and our company completely here in the U.S., not relying on what happens in Finland because totally separate. I couldn't. Uh, it's not totally separate. We, we're still a daughter company to our mothership in Finland, and they finance us uh, or up to this. Now we're self-contained. Uh, but uh, um, there was a moment where, where I was counting on them to help me and that's why I wasn't taking the responsibility of putting my foot down and taking control of everything. I don't know if it was being afraid of co taking control of your own career and the business here or was it something that I needed I felt lonely and I needed help because Finland is over 10 hours away yeah. time difference wise and it's hard to call when you wake up you're on top of your day and you're really energetic you call them and they just put their kids to bed and they're about to go to bed and they're tired. So it's hard to get that support. And that, then when you try to have people travel back and forth, if it's four times a year, it's only four times a year you see them face to face. So this year I just put my foot down and said, you know, from now on, I'm gonna be making these decisions solely and I'll be running this company like I should be. And that's when we started getting results, you know, more than in the previous years. What do you think about, you came from nothing and in stories like these, what do you think about the theory of, you know, making yourself a victim, right? There's all these challenges that you have I say make thing, yourself right? a victim, make it your story, right? We came from Curacao and these kids have nothing. They have fields that have rocks on it. And instead of saying, oh, I can't play baseball, I can't do this, they made it their story. You made all your things your story. Like coming to America, it sounds like you did the same thing. Yeah, it's, uh, um, it's first of all, I mean, coming to America, I understand, it was a big step for me because in Finland, I was an A-list celebrity. I, our company is highly successful. I was invited to presidential ball for Independence Day. I was voted the best dressed and the best guest of presidential really? Let's ball. Really? Let's be honest. The best and, dressed? <laughs> and all that, you know, I, I had it all. Yeah. And it was an easy life. But then I'm like, that's not enough. Something inside me is telling me that if I don't do this leap of faith now, I won't be happy when I'm older. I'll be a bitter old man. And yeah. I don't want to be that. I've seen enough of that. Yeah, we know so, Marcus, right? Yeah, we know Marcus. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I came here, but it was such a big step of coming from the safety network, you know, free education, healthcare, kids are good off, well off in Finland, to here and starting from scratch, putting on your, you know, poop kickers and start kicking some poop. Yeah. And it took two and a half years to get some real results. But it was worth it. You mean two I and a half years? Like it, wasn't cool it wasn't luck. It wasn't luck. It took you two luck. and a half years. But we've had, we've had. I mean, we've had shows in 2006. I sold something. 2010, I sold something for our brand, and now I've sold a few shows after that. But it was always hard work, never giving up, finding a new angle to. If somebody says no, I never take a no for an answer. I find a way to turn that no into yes, or if I can't turn it into yes, I can learn from it for my next pitch. What did we do wrong? And then on top of that, you need some timing and luck, but just a little sprinkle. Yeah. It's not to count on the luck. And we've had so much bad luck. I remember back in the days, we sold Dutchens in America uh, for MTV. And we're like, yeah, we just, 
We just took a, a hit for a year. We were out here pitching. We didn't film anything, create any content. We just came here to sell this. We sold it. And right as we were at the airport going to film, MTV fires a bunch of people and tells that our new direction is that we're not doing any dude shows like Nitro Circus and Jackass or Vimbala Bam or Wild Boys. We're just yeah. doing 16 and pregnant, teen mom. And we're like, Looking at each other like it's four dudes. How the how the heck do we get one of us pregnant? Like, but that you, was a, that but was, you guys tried anyway, right? We we still tried. Yeah, we, yeah. we went back in there. We found the right angle, right twist. Nice. We tried to get one of us pregnant. That yeah. didn't work. Darn. Uh, and then uh, you know you know a year later we got a show and and we we made a show and the first two weeks we were shooting three of us was hospital with severe injuries. Wow. <laughs> and we had five more weeks to shoot. Yeah, well, I have two more. And questions. We had to adjust again. Yeah, two more questions, real quick. You you mentioned here it takes a long time. You know, two and a half years. You have a family, and a lot of people that are entrepreneurs that they have this pressure. And I want you to talk about it because I have it. You know, you believe in everything. You know, because you know what you can do, and, and you you don't believe in linear time like me. I can tell. Yeah. You just know it'll come at the right way at the perfect time. But when you have a wife and kids, and they're sitting there, and you're a rock star at home. It's not easy. You know, where does that come in for all the entrepreneurs out there? What gives you the faith to convince your most important person in your life to do the same? It's, I think when you're an entrepreneur, first of all, you get to balance your life. You get to take a long weekend when you need to take it. You should take it. And when you get kids, you, you are put into a position where you have to force yourself priorities because I want to see my kids grow up. I want to be there for them. Me too. So you have your kids, you have your own hobbies because you can never forget about yourself. You got your work and then you got your wife and your uh, whatever you want to do together with wife. Yeah. So it's it makes you put it all in balance. And then just to understand, it's, it's a, like a sea of waves that sometimes you work more, sometimes you work less. And now this year, I haven't had a single day of vacation because we went into producing this show and selling it and we you know pre-produced it in a record time for this level show in finland we had seven months to pre-produce yeah. the same show here we had a month and a half wow to cast to you know take it that was the ultimate Peru. challenge that by was the ultimate i should have had my my media company filming you doing the show that would have been the ultimate that, that would have been that would have been quite something and you know dealing with american stars and cast members and their management and their lawyers and trying to negotiate everything down yeah uh, you know I was, why my hair uh, looks like this buddy <laughs> i'm gonna be uh that's why this hat comes with the wig <laughs> nice <laughs> the uh, i went to a high valley inn and spa for 10 days i took my family out. we were supposed to be in finland for july whole july just on a vacation we couldn't i scratched that we got to shoot the show we got to uh, sell it or we got to produce it so i went to valley uh ohio valley in and spa for 10 days during those 10 days i just took my family there so i can spend an hour or two at the pool with the kids i had 35 to 48 calls every day and between four to six um uh, spoken hours on the phone a yep. day throughout those 10 days I shot three videos, a clothing line uh, field catalog there, and then we negotiated all these deals with the cast members. And the funniest thing is, I'm at the same restaurant every evening, working on emails, talking to my lawyer, and thank God he's a dedicated man. He, he was there at 3.30 th a.m. talking with me. But the bar or the restaurant closes at 2 a.m. And the server comes in the last day at 2 a.m., brings me a bottle of tequila and says, you've been here every evening <laughs> all <laughs> the way till we close. I think you deserve that. I'm like, thanks. I think we can wrap this up tonight. Yeah. And we wrapped it at 4.30 a.m. that morning. The biggest mistake people make, because I live the 520 rule. All, all my phone calls are five minutes. All my meetings are 20. Yeah. Right? That's what I try to goal. But the word balance and, and you've just articulated so well. People think when you say balance that you should spend, you know, twenty percent of your time here, twenty here. It doesn't work that way, yeah. right? First, there's overlap, then there's efficiency, but there's also quality time. And you just described that. Last question: What legacy? You've done so much in your life, and you're only thirty-seven years old, so you're probably a third of your life done, you know, considering how well you treat yourself and uh, <laughs> well preserved. But what is your legacy? What do you want to leave behind when it's all over, York? I wanna. I've been thinking about it. This was part of the therapy with, with the dudes that we did as a group that what is our legacy? What is your legacy that you want to live? And my legacy is I want to be remembered as the guy who lived his life, who did the things he wanted to do in life. 
his let's call it bucket list, even though I hate that word. But that's I the Rob Angel. Diving. That's the Rob Angel this Pictionary year, Hero word. This year, I learned how to double backflip on a trampoline, and I'm 37. I learned how to fly a plane. I did the shark head, hammerhead. I did all the death loops on a plane because I wanted to. I want to take my family on a road trip via air to that's Africa awesome. one day. Uh, so I wanna, I wanna be the guy who did what he wanted to, lived his life with a smile on his face and was happy because he satisfied that inner passion. And that made him a great father that spent time, quality time with his kids and with his friends and his wife. And was also a great entrepreneur that always fearlessly grasped, uh, grabbed the bull by the horns and, uh, and, and lived life. That's awesome. That's, you why, that's why I have tattooed and the outfit. Live Your Dream yeah. on my hand. Which and is the my outfit motto. for it, right? And you know, you heard it. I love the bucket list thing. I'm going to be a L'Oreal model tomorrow. We're flying to New York. I'm actually going to, that's a bucket list for me. They went ugly early and they're going to go Dave Meltzer do the gray camouflage think, hair thing. Anyway, it's been fantastic having you. Uh, I really look forward to the friendship we're going to have. I can tell we're brothers from another mother. Thank and you. we have a lot of good friends in, in common. I have one of my newest and best friends, Yuka Hilden from Rabbit Films and The Ultimate Expedition, where they do incredible things in Peru. I wish I was brave enough to do it. But what an extraordinary, extraordinary story. And you are now one of my new best friends. So thank you, Yuka. I look forward to seeing you. This is Dave Meltzer with Entrepreneur, The Playbook. Thank you. Peace, love, and happiness. Peace. I looked around the locker room one day. The guys were reading the Wall Street Journal, uh, ESPN the Magazine, Playboy, Cigar Aficionado, uh, you name it. And I was Rob like, Report. Rob Report. <laughs> I was like, what if I combine all that content into one magazine? And that's when OT was born.